Okay, so in this one, we are going to be solving our systems of equations by graphing. So yes, you've got to graph it. But it's okay, you got this. So the first thing that we're going to do, now whether you're going to graph it by hand or you're going to plug it into Desmos, is we first need to make sure that our equations are in the correct format. Now regardless if you're plugging it in and graphing it by hand or putting it into your Desmos calculator, both of your equations must be in slope intercept form. Okay. Looking at both of these equations, they are in standard form. So the first thing that we're going to do is, that's right, we're going to solve the equation. We're just going to convert them. Easy peasy. So looking at this first equation, I have x plus y equals 2. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x on both sides. Okay. So there's my original equation, subtract x from both sides, and I'm left with y equals negative x plus 2. Look at that, already in slope intercept form. And if you wanted, you could already just go ahead and add that into your Desmos calculator. On my next equation, I have x minus y equals 4. Same thing, I want y all by itself. So I'm going to subtract x to both sides. So I'm left with negative y equals negative x plus 4. Now here, be very careful. I have a negative in front of that y. I want my y to be positive. So to get that negative to turn it into a positive, I'm just going to divide everything by that negative 1. So now I'm left with y equals a negative divided by a negative is positive, x minus 4. I am ready to graph. Okay. So I'll start with this one here. I'm going to start on my y-intercept, which is negative 4. Plot it there. And then my slope is that number in front of the x. I know we don't see it, but it is a number 1. So that is 1 over 1. So we're going to go up 1 and over 1. Okay, up 1 and over 1. And I'm just putting my points in here. And then I'm just going to connect that with one solid line. The next thing is now I'm going to graph my top equation, starting at my y-intercept, which is positive 2. And my slope on this one is negative 1. So it tells me I'm going to go down 1 and over 1. So it looks something like this. We can already see where those two lines intersect. Now remember, a solution to a system of equation is where both of these lines are going to intersect. Okay, now we can very easily see this. I hope you can. Okay, there's that point of intersection. So my solution here is where it is my x value is 3, my y value negative 1, and that is the solution to my system. How do you check it? Well, Take those points, that x and that y, plug it into both of those equations. If it makes it true, you know you got it. So how about you try the next one? Let me know. On our next problem, we are asked to solve this system by substitution. Now remember, with substitution, the first thing that we need to accomplish is we need one of our variables, either x or y, all by itself on one side of the equation. Okay. So looking at these two systems, these two equations, do we have one of these that is already solved for x or y? Absolutely. Okay. So the first step that we're going to do is we know from here that y equals 5x minus 27. Okay. It is already solved at this point for y. So now I'm going to go back up to my first equation. I'm going to rewrite it, but now instead of putting in that variable y, I'm going to put in that 5x minus 27 okay, equals 4. So all I did was I substituted what was here for my y. Okay? And now we just start solving the equations. So I don't touch my 2x as of yet, so I just bring that down. So I'm going to 2x 
Now, remember, don't call me after midnight. So the first step, I'm going to distribute. So three times five X is positive 15 X. Then I have three times negative 27. And it's okay, take out your Desmos, plug it in. Three times negative 27, did you get negative 81? Okay, check me. And then I just bring down my equals and my four. Okay. So that's my D. The next, don't call C, combine like terms. Absolutely. I have two X's on the side, so I'm going to add these together. I have 17 X minus 81 equals four. On here, look, we've already gotten rid of our Y value, their Y variable. So we are simply solving for X. Okay. I need to get that X all by itself. So I'm going to add 81 to both sides because I want these to cancel out, which they do. So I am left with 17X equals, what's 81 plus four? 85, okay? Now what's my last step? That's right, I want X all by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 17. And when I do so, I have X equals five. So I know my X, but remember, a solution for a system is an ordered pair. So I need a Y. Do I know what my Y is yet? No. So I need to go up and solve for my Y. So I'm gonna go very back to my very top and you can choose either one of these equations. I'm gonna choose this one right here because I think for me, it's gonna make the easiest one for me to solve. So I have Y equals five and instead of that X, I'm gonna put in the five because I know what X equals, minus 27. Okay. And now let's solve it. So five times five is 25, minus 27. And Y equals negative two. So my solution is written as an ordered pair. I have five comma negative two, and there you go. That is how I solve it by substitution. How can you check to make sure that this answer is correct? Well, take that ordered pair and plug it in to both of those equations. If it makes both of them true, you know you got it. Okay, our next example, we are going to solve by elimination. And it means exactly that. We're going to eliminate one of these variables to begin with. My first suggestion for you is go ahead and rewrite both equations so they are stacked one right on top of each other like this. I just think it's easier to see. I know personal preference, but if you can do it, that's fine, but I just think it's just easier to see. Okay, so now looking at both of these, my goal is I need to eliminate one of these variables because I want my X or my Y to cancel out. Looking at both of them, I'm thinking that it is going to be my X that is going to be the easiest to eliminate, okay? Because I can just multiply the very top in order to eliminate my X's, this should be a negative three. So how do I make that a negative three? Well, I just multiply the entire equation by negative three. So the first thing I'm going to do is exactly that, multiply that entire top equation by negative three. So I have negative three X, and then negative three times negative three Y is a positive nine Y, and then negative three times negative 13 is a positive 39. Okay, watch your signs on these. If there's a mistake that we are going to make, it's always going to be with our signs. Now I'm just simply going to rewrite that second equation. 
And then look what happens. Whoops. Look what happens here. Do you see one that can cancel out when I add them together? Absolutely. You know, like I like to say in class, our evil plan worked. These two are going to cancel out, and that's exactly what we wanted. So now I'm just adding. So what's 9 plus 7? I'm left with 16y. And then 39 plus 25. Go ahead and put it in your decimal. I'm going to try to put it by hand. So I'm left with 464. Yes, check me. Okay. So now here I am. I got rid of my x. I'm simply solving for y. Back to solving equations, I'm going to divide both sides by 16, and I'm left with y equals 4. Now, am I done? Nope, you got it. I'm not, because I know my y variable, so I need to solve for my x. So I'm going to go very back to the top, and I'm going to choose one of these original equations. It doesn't matter which one, okay? and we are just going to solve for x now. So I'm going to go to this cell just for simplicity's sake. I'm just going to stick it in this one. You could use the top one, no problem, personal preference. So here I am, I'm going to rewrite the equation. I have 3x plus 7, but instead of y, I'm going to put in this 4 because I've already solved for my y, okay? I know that my y equals 4, so let's go ahead and substitute that in. and then equals 25. Now, I'm just solving the equation. I'm not gonna do anything with my 3x now, so I bring that down. Seven times four is 28. Then I just bring down my equals and my 25. So I did my D, distribute, C, combine like terms, no like terms on either side, okay? The me, is move the variable, no variable to move. So now I'm at adding, subtracting. So the first thing I need to get rid of is this positive 28. I need to move it to the other side. So I'm gonna subtract 28. And remember what we do to one side, do to the other. Those cancel out. I haven't touched my 3x yet, so I'm bringing that down. And then 25 minus 28, you gotcha, negative three. And then my last step, because we do want x by itself, I'm going to divide by three, and I have x equals negative one. So the solution to this system is written as an ordered pair, negative one comma four. Now, how do I know I did it right? Because yes, you're right, solving equations, the one mistake that we could easily make is our signs. We'll take this equation, this ordered pair, and plug it in to both of these equations. If it makes it true, then you know you're spot on the money. So let's try it. Okay, I'm just gonna move over here. So I'll take my top equation. Instead of x, I have my negative one, minus my three instead of y, I have a four equals negative 13. And now let's solve it. So I have negative one, and then negative three times four is negative 12 equals negative 13. And then let's combine these terms, negative one and negative 12, negative 13. Well, made that one true. So right now, spot on the money, but don't stop there. Remember, it needs to make both of the equations true. So we still need to check the second one. So I'm gonna go back up here. I have the three X plus seven Y equals 25. And let's do the same thing. Three, and instead of X, I have negative one plus seven. Instead of Y, I have four equals 25. And now let's solve for our equation. Three times negative one is negative three plus seven times four is 28 equals 25. And now let's just solve this. Negative three plus 28, 25 equals 25. Did it make it true? Absolutely. Did it make both of these true? Absolutely. So now you know, spot on the money, that negative one comma four is the solution to this system using elimination method.